I'm Susan, VP of Marketing, Business Development and Customer Experience of SPTEL. Thank you so much for joining us today in our Homegrown with Digital Age Leadership Sharing Series. Today, I'm very glad to have Queen Hans, the Director of Red Sand, as well as Aloysius Chong, the CEO of IFSC with us today. And they'll be sharing with us the their vision about IoT, how IoT can lead to improved efficiency as well as cost savings in uh, smart buildings in Singapore. Thank you for having us here today and very happy to share the stage with uh, Aloysius. So um, I'm the director of RedSense and I guess RedSense began 10 years ago when we looked at um, the pain points of pest management and we we realized that um, rodents were particularly challenging to manage because rodents are very highly intelligent creatures. Then at the time, even till now, setting up baits and traps and then checking on these only like at a monthly or weekly basis is not enough to handle rodents. So we figured there must be a better way to manage rodents. And then fast forward to today, we have now an IoT solution that enables us to gather data that informs us of how rodent behaves and moves in the uh, space, even outdoors and indoors. All right, so how about Loisius? Yeah, thanks Thanks for having me, Susan, and, and, and pleasure to share the stage with uh, Queen as well. So I'm Loisius, I'm CEO of IFSC. Uh, under the group, we do um, um, multiple tech uh, technologies for facility services industry. So we have robotics, we have software, and we have IoT. Uh, key to our product line is a product we call Simple. So we have been around for about six years now and we started a lot with robotics, uh, playing around with IoT sensors. And uh, last year, during, during COVID time, we, we thought how could we help facility owners manage their buildings better with such technology. And we thought um, managing, managing a building should be easy, simple and fun, like playing uh, SimCity. So that's a sim and simple. And for us, uh, really what the product is, is to aid the productivity of people around. So that's why SIMPLE has a double P, PPLE, standing for people. We know that IoT will become increasingly important as we move towards smart buildings. Could you share a little bit more with us on some of the key trends or technologies to look out for in this area? So I think when it comes to managing anything, we want to look at uh, consistency, efficiency, and also being able to monitor how everything is going along. So the irony, the irony of that is that humans are the one executing these plans. So obviously with that comes room for error, it comes inconsistency. So then smart building comes in where you use technology to overcome these downsides. So I think the key trend will also be that um, being able to use uh, technology to preemptively uh, uh, know what goes on within the building system. So using data is very important. And as we like to say, without data, it is only an opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with data, you can see things uh, before it happens, especially when it comes to pest management. So for example, um, you want to know that uh, maybe a cleaning schedule was missed or maybe the refuse schedule was also missed. Things like that can actually um, cause issues that give rise to rodent problems or even pest problems in general. It is very important that even then, these systems will fit into each other on the same platform so that you can manage the building more efficiently and you get a really complete picture of what goes on exactly within the entire building. I fully agree on that. I think uh, these days, um, contracts being thrown out are, are, are no longer singular like cleaning contracts or maintenance contracts. They are, they are being scoped in a way such as it, an integrated FM contract. So, so in this way, all of the different parts of um, like cleaning, pest control are all fully, fully integrated. And that is where the data flow between each system is very, very important. So a project that we had uh, together with NEA was to, uh, was to see how we could integrate two parts of a, of a typical contract together in one. So we took a normal cleaning robot, we outfitted it with security features, and that became a two-in-one cleaning uh, plus security robot. So in a normal day, uh, a cleaning robot only works for maybe one to two hours before it takes a break. But when we put on the security head on top of it, that singular platform now becomes more effective, more efficient. It's able to do two jobs with one, with one single robot. By any chance, would you be able to share with us any successful instances where such technology has benefited an organisation? So one that comes to mind would be our pilot project with NEA. So this project is actually one where we deploy um, rodent monitoring devices, which include sensors, traps and cameras across over 100 locations nationwide within two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And then this is basically a combined effort between NEA and RedSense to gather data on rodent movement and behaviour within uh, indoor premises. 
obviously on the long run this will fit into the ability to be able to improve hygiene and sanitation standards and then also more importantly um, create cost-effective solutions and also integrated solutions for pest management industry as a whole. So like for us, I mentioned the two-in-one cleaning plus security uh, our project was together with uh, People's Association and it's being deployed at Bedok Heartbeat. So we, we helped both the cleaning company as well as the security company reduce the, the need for manpower in, in certain aspects of their work. And we are taking that concept and see how we could uh, bring it to the next stage. So simple AI, uh, patent pending process, which we have recently just launched, uh, helps to automate certain tasks such as cleaning tasks based on incidents that happen. Were there any challenges faced in convincing customers of your solution? It's a bit challenging when they think of using in technology to, to incorporate into pest management solutions. I think namely because typically you want to see the rodent caught. Then that you feel that something is done, right? But then the fact is that before you catch a rodent, you need to know where the rodent is. You need to have basically what we like to call intelligence on the rodent movement, the behaviour. Because even if you have caught one rodent, it doesn't mean that the rest are caught. And you also need to know how many is there out there. Even like down to the species, the gender, the age of the rodent, it will inform you about the entire situation that you're dealing with. So it's very important for that. So then when we present that to our clients, they tend to be like, okay, and then how many are you going to catch? But that's not the point. The point is that you want to have the intelligence first. Then with that intelligence, it will inform you on how to strategically lay out your treatment plan. Mm -hmm. At the same time, also it also overcomes, the, as you mentioned, the manpower situation. Mm -hmm. You use data to collect real-time information 24-7. You don't have to have rely on manpower mm -hmm. to go down only at certain intervals because you miss a lot of other times that rodents are moving about. So for us as well, I think uh, clients, the first thing that they want is how much cost can I save? Okay. Uh, how much manpower can I, sa can I save in that? Uh, but they don't understand that actually data, um, they, they first need to know what they are looking for. Because to actually reduce manpower, they need to look at how they could uh, improve their services and reduce the repetitive work that they are doing. And in so we are already improving productivity and efficiency. So if their initial standpoint is straight out, I'm going to put in technology I can immediately reduce, uh, that is often quite, quite, quite skilled. They need to look at where they can improve their operations and from there, how they can increase productivity. Through our system, sometimes you could see productivity increase by up to 70%, uh, but that might not re relate totally to a 70% reduction in headcount. What it means is 70% in uh, productivity increase. In a headcount reduction, we could look at possibly the 10 to 15% reduction. So what are the challenges for use case deployment and how did you overcome them? I guess for some cases, initially we tried with Wi-Fi. So then when Wi-Fi, you talk about Wi-Fi, you need um, the router, you need like a base station and all that. So, and then because of the limitations of the connectivity, you need more um, hardware to put around on top of the sensors. Mm -hmm. But even then, it will also be affected by um, structural uh, obstacles and different movements around. So then it was very tricky and challenging for us to scale that on a bigger, bigger uh, basis. Then we found um, Laura Wen. So Laura Wen allows us to be able to just put one base station at one location and then have our sensors deployed within that location. Mm -hmm. So actually the difference in that, uh, the use of hardware is actually 75% less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it really makes a difference when you come to logistics, operations, when you have to set up less um, devices so-called just to maintain the actual ones that you actually need. And thanks to Laura Wen, we have this uh, ability to also scale very easily and um, make it very hassle-free for even the site owners as well. And also one important thing is having less devices and less hardware on site, you also reduce the risk of like electrical or fire hazards around. So this is where um, SPTL's Laura Wen really comes in because it also is applicable for outdoor scenarios. Rodents are everywhere, indoors, outdoors. And then we use a combination of like heat sensors and motion sensors. All these will actually fit on the, the existing network. And at the same time, as we mentioned earlier about how we need to integrate different solutions. So we also have use cases where like it's a building and then we also get a tender where we are part of a bigger you know, picture of everything. So then we also want to be able to have that ability to tap on the existing platform and SPTL has proven to provide that kind of platform where we, as pest management, we are one plug in the everything else. So we combine with like cleaning or refuse. Yeah, so similarly, I think connectivity <laughs> is, a, is a huge issue, especially when we're de dealing with video feeds. Uh, so if you use the normal broadband or 5G, 4G, there's going to be latency lag. 
so, so I think for us it was really good uh, working with SPTEL for the MEC. Uh, we, we found that the connectivity was much faster uh, and we are able to stream uh, certain video feeds um, without, without any latency. What is your view on the importance of IoT and how will it factor in the various opportunities in the future of smart city, smart nation? During pandemic, we all realised that we actually don't need that much people to have something function properly. So then obviously there's also a manpower crunch where people are, you know, leaving their, their workspaces. So then IoT really comes in by filling that space. And even at a higher rate of, like as I mentioned earlier, consistency, efficiency, and being able to have the data to understand fully what you're looking at and what you're managing. So I think that's one uh, direction that IoT will really help. So how about you, Aloysius? I think the key moving forward, it's all about accountability. With SG clean and how a, a facility needs to be secure, clean, it's all about being accountable with as little manpower as possible, but then yet still meeting the standards that uh, the government and building owners require. So with IoT sensors, because data, uh, you, you can't cheat data in that sense. So IoT sensors give very, very accountable uh, feedback on how a building is managed and then that in turn gives you enough data to properly manage your, your, your building or your facility with as efficient a workforce as possible. Any words of wisdom to impart to those looking to start their own IoT journey? Um, I would say it's very important to find partners that you can really work with and who understand your solution because as we mentioned earlier, integration is a very big part of uh, IoT solution. So then you want partners who also understand what you bring to the table, then together you're on the same page when you come together as one holistic solution. I think for me, very, very similar in thought process, you need to be very open. Uh, it is very rare nowadays that, uh, that a single solution can help solve a problem. Uh, in fact, clients don't really like piecemeal solutions. They like an ecosystem, which, which Queen mentioned. So having a very, very open mindset in a partnership spirit to say that, hey, I have this part of things, but how can I pull in different different parts together to form a whole ecosystem. For example, like us, we never ever thought we'll get into the pest control part, but <laughs> actually getting the data from RedSense actually in, into our system gives the client a more holistic picture on how they can manage a facility. Thank you so much, Queen, and also Aloysius, for sharing with us all your insights, you know, on how IoT can improve efficiency as well as cost saving for uh, use cases deployment in Singapore. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having Thanks, us. Yeah. Very Thanks. nice to be here today. Yeah.